Hey everyone, welcome to church. So glad that you're here. My name is Wes, my wife Vanessa and I were the pastors here and we just wanna say welcome home. A big shout out to those of you you've liked and you've subscribed. Our last message series, it went like wildfire around the globe. And I just want to say thank you so much for checking out. We were talking about the church and the vision of the church. We called it Take Me to Church. And so thank you. Many of you, you've shared it online. You shared it with friends. So thank you so much uh, for doing that. It helps us get the message of Jesus and the message of hope out to so many people who need it right now. So if you're watching this, thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing, of course, on all of your social media outlets. Um, today we are continuing on this series on Christmas. All month long we're talking about Christmas and I just want to just let you know Christmas Eve make plans to be here in the room with us five o'clock we are doing a Christmas Eve candlelight service. You do not want to miss it. It's going to be magical. No other way to describe it. It's going to be magical and especially if you're like hey you know what I think I've been wanting to check out that church. Let Christmas Eve be that time that you say, you know what, I'm going to come check it out. I'm going to see if this might be a church for me. Um, if you have any questions about who we are, what we're about, what we believe, you can check out our website. We'll throw it up on the bottom of the screen for you. Today, I want to encourage you in this phrase, God's got this. God's got this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 says this, This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. It was a miraculous thing. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, he was a righteous man. He's, up, he's upright. He's, he's, he's a good man. He did not want to disgrace her publicly. He finds out that she's pregnant. And he goes, hey, I don't want to disgrace you publicly, but I got to call this thing off. And so he decides to break the engagement quietly. And as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. This thing that, that's happening, this child that's within her, this is conceived by the Holy Spirit. This isn't some illegitimate child. She's not out running the streets. This is not an illegitimate thing. This is a miraculous, once-in-a-lifetime God thing. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. And he begins to quote from Isaiah chapter number 7, verse 14. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Joseph wakes up from the stream. That's a crazy dream. He did exactly as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife. He didn't have sexual relations with her until their son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. I was watching a comedian recently, and he had mentioned about how he was jealous of kids today. And while I was watching it, I laughed. and I go, oh my goodness, I get it. I get it. Then he, he had mentioned he saw this, uh, this parent at the grocery store with their kid and the kid's like throwing a tantrum and the mom got down at eye level with the kid and just hurt him and hugged him and, and loved him and, and brought him along better. And, I, and, and the, the community goes, where was that when I was a kid? And I'm watching, I go, exactly. I always heard this phrase and maybe you've heard it, my way or the highway. I love my parents so much, but for some reason, that line, I could have gotten it tattooed because I heard it so much, my way or the highway. Maybe you've said that before. Maybe you're a boss and you've said that to your employees. God bless you. Uh, my way or the highway. And so we take that thought sometimes to God. We say, hey, God, my way or the highway. My way or you didn't answer my prayer the way I want it, how I want it, when I want it, where I want it, my way or the highway. Now that phrase Messiah is throughout all of the Old Testament. It is this, it's this thought that God gives his people that a promised leader would come and help them and rescue them and redeem them. And, and this is included even in the prophet Isaiah that he would send this promised Messiah, that the Messiah would save the people that the Messiah would be God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Maybe you're going through a difficult situation and you feel like, hey, I'm going through hell and you've asked the question, God, where are you? And God thunders back from heaven, I'm with you, I'm right here. 
The promise is marked by two things. So the angel speaks to Joseph and he says, hey, two things. Number one, do not be afraid. And number two, this is God. This is God. God's got this. Maybe you can turn to a friend right now and say, God's got this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, again, where the angel says to him, Joseph, son of, the, uh, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid. And then he says, verse number 22, this thing that, that you are so concerned about, this is God. This is conceived by the Holy Spirit. The promised Messiah, the, the promises of God, they're all coming true. God does what God promises he will do. Verse 22 says this, all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message. So when God says he's going to do something, he is going to do it. I think too often we look at God like we look at our friends. We all have that friend that says, hey, I'll be there in five minutes. Now, here's the crazy thing. That is a math equation. There is a math, it is a scientific 60 seconds times five 300 seconds from now, you should be on my doorstep, right? But depending upon the person, they all have kind of different science. I have some friends who are always early. Hey, I'm gonna, I may be like five minutes late and they're like two minutes early. Like, well, just in case, I don't wanna keep you worried. Other friends say, I'll be there in five minutes. 45 minutes goes by the other day. Or one of my family members like, hey, let me call you back in five minutes. Like two hours later, I get a phone call. And it's like, oh my goodness. We take that same thinking to God of when God says, hey, here's a promise. We go, well, what kind of promise is this? When you say that you're going to do something, are you going to do it? Are you actually going to do it? When you say five minutes, God, that you're going to be here in five minutes, does it actually mean that? The life of faith is a life of continually trusting God. The life of faith is continuing to trust God's way. It's basically saying, God, I trust you, and I trust the way that you want to do this. We say that we trust God. Maybe you're, you're a follower of Jesus or you're, you're considering following Jesus and you say, hey, I trust God. But the second question I would have for you, but do you trust his way? I don't know if you've ever prayed for something and God answers the prayer different than what you wanted. Like maybe you prayed you're dating someone, you're like, God, help my relationship with this person. And then they break up with you and you're like, God, That is not what I was praying for. And God's like, no, they were a loser. No, I'm just kidding. But we pray for something and we expect it to go a certain way. What happens if God answers your prayer differently than what you anticipated? What happens if you pray for a friendship? You're like, God, I need more friends. And then God brings someone along your way. They're a great person. They're following Jesus, but they're older or they're younger. They're, they're maybe a different, uh, different race than you, or they come from a different economic background. You're like, well, God, I was praying for a friend, but I was praying for something a little bit different. God's like, this is the answer to your prayer. This person, this situation, Isaiah 43, 2, Isaiah the prophet talks to people of God. He says, when you go through deep waters, speaking on behalf of God, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For us, as as those who are doing their best to follow God, Christmas is a reminder that God always does what he promises. It may look different than what you anticipated or expected or wanted, but he always fulfills his promises. It may not happen the way that you expected, that you prayed for, or the way that you wanted but God always delivers on his promises. Joseph, do not be afraid. The situation that you're in right now, don't be afraid. Hold on, calm down. This is God. God's got this. This is the answer to all of your prayers. Let me pray for you right now. Jesus, thank you for all my friends who are watching this today. I'm praying for people who are having a difficult time trusting not just you, but trusting your way. I pray, God, that we would hear the words of the angel spoken to Joseph. Do not be afraid. This is conceived by the Holy Spirit. This God's got this. God's got you. I'm praying for anyone who's struggling or suffering from anxiety or depression right now, and they're just having a tough time trusting in the way. I'm praying that they would trust in you, Jesus, because you are the way. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. 
Hey, if you'd like to take some next steps in following Jesus, we'll put the, uh, the website in the bottom of the screen. You're welcome to click on that or check out more about who we are and what we're about. Again, I would love to invite you to our Christmas Eve candlelight service right here in this room, December 24th, Christmas Eve at five o'clock. We're gonna have a great family service and we're gonna sing some great Christmas carols and have an encouraging message for you. We would love to see you here at church. Finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to those of you who have joined us in the journey of generosity. If I could just grab you by the shoulders and look in your eyes and tell you thank you, I would. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for helping us as we help our city. Thank you for many of you, you've jumped in as we're remodeling this building as well. Thank you so much for helping us get this place ready for what we believe God wants to do in reaching a city. If you'd like to join us in that journey as well, you can go to thehousela.org and click on that button that says give, where you can give securely one time, or you can set up your gift to reoccurring as well. Can't wait to see you back next week here at church where we are gonna have a special Christmas Eve service. We will not have service on Christmas day, but we'll have a special Chris Christmas Eve service at five o'clock here in this room and a special Christmas Eve service online as well. God bless and we'll see you back soon.